Lost the crack. This is, uh, it's, uh, <laughs> pretty strange to be, uh, sitting here talking to a camera again. Um, but I am three years later. Mental. This video is like three years late. As I'm editing it, I just, I just realized I never did an intro to it. And I also never did an outro. So I filmed this video back in January of 2020 and in my mind at the time I was like okay this is going to be the start of something bigger for the channel a new kind of direction and stuff like that and then and then I just hid away <laughs> for a while. I don't know like I've no excuses really other than I think I just needed to. So yeah <laughs> this is the last video that I made and I hope you enjoy it. It's Paul Braun Dolman in the middle of Covid. I had it all to myself and I was able to just get some lovely lovely shots i do hope you enjoy and i'll be back again at the end of the video it's really really thick and cold honestly but the cheapest diesel is here so uh, that's why i stopped i got a 50 euro voucher off my mother for christmas for a uh, diesel so i'm gonna use that thanks man so yeah ready to go let's do this yeah first thing i'm gonna have a snack oh mm, very good okay let's go for a break for a minute just to stretch my legs and stuff. Something here that you might be interested in. It's Father Ted's house. This is one of the cool things about living in Clare is that you can just go and visit Father Ted's house. I've been here a few times but uh oh Jesus <laughs> I did not see this at all. Slowly back out. Just 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 be careful. I uh, I won't be walking that direction so I'm just gonna get a shot from the gate here. There you go, Father Ted's house. The legendary Craggy house. Isn't it a craggy house? Isn't that what it's called? It's just nice to pass by and uh, yeah, stop in at Father Ted's. Although I can't actually call in. Yeah, you have to make an appointment. People were actually able to go into the house and have tea and stuff inside. So there's like some kind of, oh my god, there's sheep. You were able to actually have tea inside in the house, which is cool. So what I'm thinking is if you want to see me do that in a video, let me know in the comments. I'm not sure, like I think it'll be a cool video. As you do know, I love Father Ted, and if you haven't seen my Father Ted Craggy Island videos or Ted Fest videos, they're uh, up here. Uh, there's the sheep. Hello. Yeah, I know they can't hear me, but uh, yeah, that's cool. As you can see, my car is kind of taking uh, a beating from the dusty roads. One of the reasons why I think this is so cool is because just to think that Father Ted was actually filmed at one of the most iconic TV shows ever and one of my favorite TV shows, it's just so cool to think that it's almost on my doorstep, you know? There she is, almost ready to go up. Just thinking now how cool would it be to recreate the helicopter scene from the start of Father Ted, the opening titles where it kind of crashes at the front of the house. Hmm. No, there's people living in there, that's just, no. No, I can't, I can't. Can I? No, I can't. I was not expecting this view. Just look at this. Oh my god. It's unbelievable. I hadn't planned on stopping again until I get to the dolmen, but uh, I mean, how can I not put the drone up in the air here? This is amazing. So yeah. Upwards! This view is absolutely amazing and I've never seen it before and it is kind of annoying that I haven't seen it before because it's literally like an hour from my house and it's breathtaking. It's, it, it is warming up a bit but it still feels pretty cold. I'm glad that I have my hat and my face scarf. The fox. I just saw him running away. There he is. See you later fox. So I've arrived at Paul Nebron and I'm just about to head in. There are a couple of other cars here, but um, yeah, there's not too many, so I'm gonna kind of skulk around a little bit and uh, hopefully they'll leave so I can get the drone up in the air because uh, yeah, it'd be really nice to get some drone shots. 
Oh, and it is a little bit cold. So I have been here before. The last time I was here was in 20, 2016, I think it was. The last time I came to see it, it was with a crowd of people. Like there was maybe 50, 60 people here. Today, hopefully I'm gonna get to see it by myself or with very few people here. Size that thing. Seriously, that's massive. Do you want to know how it got there? This entire plateau, this entire place, used to be under like a mountain of ice. So the ice started to melt and move across the land, and as it did, it brought stuff like this with it, and it just left it here. And this is where it's probably stood for thousands of years. Not sure about this one exactly, but I mean, it doesn't look like it's gone anywhere, you know? People used to think that these were left here by giants. You know, it was just the giant out playing one day, throwing his rocks around the place, and his mother calls him for dinner, and he's like, oh, shit, you better go in for me sausages. And you know, this is his tie. <laughs> you know, I like that theory, but uh, that's how the rock got here. It was caught up in a giant ice cube. Just imagine the size of the giant sausages. It'd be fucking like three pigs in a sausage. So this is it, this is what I came all the way to see. This is Paul Nebron Dolman. And for those of you that don't know, Paul Nebron Dolman is actually a portal tomb. And the portal tomb was used back in the day, I mean, back a long time ago, to put people's remains into. It's estimated that Paul Nebron has been standing for about two and a half to four thousand years. So that's older than the pyramids at the very least. But it hasn't been standing for all of that time. During the 80s, I think it was around 1985, top stone there cracked, Paul Nebron Dolman collapsed for a short period. But during that time, an archaeologist by the name of Anne Lynch was able to get in there and she found the remains of 22 people, 16 adults and 6 children. But the amazing thing about that was that it gave us a brand new insight insight into how people lived back then and how people buried their dead. And I think it's really really cool because we get to see back in time you know. So it's estimated that they were burying people here for about 600 years but they don't actually know why people were buried here or well they do know why people were buried here but they don't know why people were chosen specifically to be buried in Paul Nebron Dolman. When they did the excavations back in the 80s there was a couple of arrowheads, a hatchet a head, it was like a fine bone pendant and there was other things that led people to believe that the people who were buried there were possibly the family members of chieftains and it would kind of tie into the fact that a chieftain would be able to construct something like this to be able to remember their dead because this is called a portal tomb and it is believed that the people who built it saw this as a portal to the other world that's why we call it a portal tomb because we believe that that's what they believed but it's just interesting to me why specific people were chosen to be buried here and why some weren't it's it's kind of a mystery one of the remains that was found here actually had uh, an arrow in its hip bone and there was no signs of healing or anything like that so they reckoned that that was possibly the cause of death or that happened as the person was dying. So there was definitely war going on here but it's amazing that Paul Nebron is still standing possibly you know 3,000, 4,000 years later. It's still here just being itself and just existing. There was one theory that said that when the remains would be put in here uh, the soul would be able to find its way out through the bigger passage and it would move more easily up to heaven or to the other world. There's lots of different theories about it, but I honestly think that the most logical theory, because these people were smart and they knew what they were building, I honestly believe that they wanted this to last, so they put a slanted roof on it so that water would run off it. That's only my personal theory. And I mean, it has stood thousands and thousands of years. You know, maybe that's it. Maybe they were just like, ah, oh, no, no, put a slant on it there, sure, and you know, the water run off, no, it'll last a bit longer. I don't know if they had Connemara accents. They might not even, probably spoke Irish. What am I, I'm sorry if I insulted those people, but like, it's probably just a slanted roof. I don't know, I, I'm not an archeologist. Okay, I shouldn't even be talking. So as I said earlier, the remains of 22 people People were found in Paul Nebron. But one of the remains that was found was a six month old baby. And it turns out tests were done on the bones of this baby. And a geneticist called Lara Cassidy actually discovered that the baby had Down syndrome. It's just amazing that it gives us that extra glimpse into the lives that these people had. People were still struggling so much back then with absolutely no help and no knowledge about Down syndrome. Or, and it's just sad. Because it wasn't for a long time after that that people actually started to find out about Down syndrome and don't get me wrong, I know people are still struggling with so much nowadays, it's just, I don't know, it just kind of blew my mind a little bit, you know. But yeah, thought you might find that interesting. And that research done by Lara Cassidy and her team in Trinity has made this the oldest known case of Down syndrome ever recorded. The most crazy thing about it is that they can actually 
figure this stuff out and break down the remains and test them and find this stuff it's just incredible science is amazing and when science and nature come together to figure each other out i just think it's really really cool these are what's known as grikes so this is all limestone it's a limestone plateau that the dolmen is on and you can just imagine the sheet just pushing its way through here and out towards the sea and eventually melting over time they say that it was around 16,000 years ago when the last ice sheets melted but the grikes are still being made because the water comes down it erodes away the calcite deposits in the limestone and it just forms this landscape and i actually think it's beautiful An english parliamentarian by the name of edmund ludlow once came to the burn and described it as a place where there isn't enough water for a man to be drowned nor a tree for him to be hung or enough earth for him to be buried and i just have to say mr ludlow you're a feckin idiot look at this place it's it's unbelievable look there's a tree over there you could hang someone over there no bother what are you talking about come on i'm gonna find someone to hang just to prove a point come here young fella come here come here but i just think that's just such a dumb description it kind of sounds like he just kind of got out of his carriage looked around and went I'll write about it later. And I'm sorry to the remaining Ludlow family <laughs> for insulting your great-great-grandfather. <laughs> but this is beautiful. It might be like a small bit barren. Yes, it's mostly rock. But come on, it's the burn. guy from the OPW he uh, he was actually really nice he just kindly asked me to uh, he didn't even ask me to take the drone down I was like I'll take it down there's no bother he was really really sound a little bit of a chat and uh, yeah that's just something that you have to be aware of is just you know try and be uh, oh there's a robin dancing around oh my god but yeah try and be aware of these things I'm gonna try and get a shot of this robin before it flies away it's near the dolman look at it on the oh where's it gone Where'd you go? Oh, he's after flying away. God damn it. So that's going to be all for me for today. I really do appreciate you coming along, seeing what I get up to here in North Clare. Hope you enjoyed the Dolman. I hope you enjoyed Father Ted's house. So subscribe down below if you want to see more videos like this. I do plan on doing more history videos, a lot more history videos. So leave your suggestions down in the comments. Subscribe. And I'll see you again in the next video. Bye. There you go. And that was uh, the last video that I made. Three years ago. And unfortunately, that is going to be the last video of season one. Season two is going to be back in January, and it's going to be a bit better than <laughs> season one. My channel in the past was kind of a, a variety channel. Going forward, it's going to be based on Ireland, based on things happening in Ireland, history, stories, characters, things like that. Things that I find interesting, things that I want to promote, because there's so much here in Ireland that, you know, it's an endless amount of things to do and see and to explore. And I want to show that to the world. I mean, I'm the Irish guy. I mean, you know, I want to show everything Irish, and that's the plan. So, yeah. Thank you again for watching. To anyone who stayed subscribed to me over the years and just not gone, oh, this channel's dead, I'm going to unsubscribe. Thank you so much for staying around. And anyone that's reached out to me personally, asking for new videos, there has been a few people. And I probably have let you watch this a bit early, just to say thanks. Uh, so, you're welcome. I'm joking. <laughs> but, um, yeah, there are new, there are bigger things coming. I will have a website. I'm gonna have a place for merch. I'm gonna have. I'm gonna have. You, you'll see. You, you'll see. It, it's all coming next month or next next year. Oh no, it is next month. Fuck. <laughs> Shit. I have a lot to do. Fuck. <laughs> okay, I need to go. Uh, yeah, but stay tuned. You'll see. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.